We had a little shakeup in the SEC on the men's side, one we did not see. Oh, total eclipse, solar yeah. eclipse is yeah. happening today. Didn't see this one? You didn't see that? Don't look up at the sun, guys. Protect your eyesight, protect your mental, protect your health. We're one of those. I didn't see that. I didn't see this happening. We didn't see that happening. See we that did happening. not see John Calipari saying bye-bye to Kentucky and instead helping over that the grass may be green on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's how things are opening. Arkansas is a spot for him because this is the news that came out last night. Kentucky's top dog, John Calipari, is nearing an agreement to become the next head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. That's the latest from our Matt Norlander. He'll be replacing former SEC rival Eric Musselman, who left for the USC job after five seasons in Fayetteville. It's been a shaky stretch for Coach Cal in Lexington, who has not made it to the Final Four since 2015 and has not gotten out of the first weekend since 2019. Here's more from Mr. Norlander on the Landscape Shaking News. A downright volcanic news overnight in college basketball on the eve of the national title game. And now here on Monday, here we go. Uh, the biggest game in the sport is about to be played, but the biggest story is coming out of Lexington. And there's a straight line to Fayetteville, Arkansas, with John Calipari taking the Arkansas job. That is set, according to my sources, to be made formal on Monday, barring an absolute change of heart that no one thinks is on the table. About five years, around eight or so million dollars per year is the expected terms. Keep in mind, the NIL package, at Arkansas is going to try and Attached to this could have some impact on those numbers overall. We'll see if Calipari can do what Musselman did. Eric Musselman got Arkansas to the second weekend, three consecutive seasons, two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16. This past season was a letdown, and that's in part why Musselman, in addition to having a new location, Southern California, he left there. Nevertheless, the SEC got flipped upside down. College basketball got flipped upside down. And with Kentucky, now we wait and see Mitch Barnhart. He's got a list already. Some names attached to it could be Nate Oates, could be Scott Drew, could be Billy Donovan. Could be Rick Pitino. You, you just go down and down the list. Could you have Buzz Williams, Bruce Pearl? Frankly, because of the size and stature of the Kentucky job, almost anyone that gets a call is going to listen, and they're going to have to move fast now because suddenly Kentucky finds itself that it has not been in in a very long time, and that is with a roster that is uncertain, with a coach not there, and a place that is unstable as we get ready to pour right into the offseason after Monday night's title game. The Wildcats have been pretty far from winning a title. That's one reason why we are here today. Kentucky has not been out of the first weekend of the tournament since 2019. They suffered those upset losses of the 15 seed St. Peter's and the 14 seed Oakland in 22 and then this year. So that's just one win in the tourney since they made it to the Elite Eight in 2019. That will not get it done. But he leaves Kentucky with a legacy that is truly unmatched. Here's his numbers when you look at it and combine them with his stops at UMass, Memphis, and now that it's over with the Wildcats. A win percentage of 765. 410 of his 855 wins came with the Wildcats. Those 410 are the fourth most wins and the fourth best record of any D1 team in the last 15 seasons. So he got it done. Gave them a natty in 2012. Four Final Fours with the Wildcats. Six in total. And now those days are done. All right, let's dive deeper into this. Our guy, college basketball analyst Michael Donald, checking in early with us because this is big news. And, and Mike, I'm curious because when this broke last night, a lot of people might have said that this was a win for both sides. Why is that? Well, I was sleeping, and all of a sudden my phone starts you blowing up. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Matt Norlander used the word volcanic, mm -hmm. a tectonic shift. I oh, mean, like we're you. just we're dropping oh. it all. I mean, all, all morning. That's, that's how we're doing it. It, it. it changes everything. It really does in college basketball. And this kind of upends the conversation for the national championship at least for maybe the next like four or five hours um, but this is going to be something that is going to send waves across college basketball it already has he's about to get a lot of other coaches paid which we can talk more about but this kind of felt as if if, if this would have happened last year, you would say, this is strange, this is bizarre. Right. But it happening now, it almost kind of feels like I get it. I understand it because of all the turmoil that Calipari has received at Kentucky.
He goes to an Arkansas program that has had some recent success. We've seen them make runs in the tourney in these most recent years. So now if you plop in a John Calipari right there in Arkansas, what does he do for the Razorbacks program and how does he maybe instantly elevate it? Well, you bring the best recruiter in college basketball into your program, number one. And I understand that there's a shift in mentality, right, where that's where he got a lot of, I guess, flack from the Kentucky fan base. So we're too young, it's, it's too many freshmen, but uh, you still want to get the, the best freshmen in your program as early as you can. And so I, I think he's gonna be fine morphing that, but Arkansas is getting the best recruiter in college basketball we've seen the last 10 years, maybe the last 15 years. And he's also one of the best coaches too. Anybody, if you talk to any high level coach, the fan bases will say, well, he's just a great recruiter. John Calipari is an excellent basketball coach. He's, he's really, really good. He's underrated in the X's and O's, and he won a ton of Kentucky, won a lot at Memphis, won a lot at UMass. He's going to win at Arkansas. He's going to recruit in Arkansas, and I think this is a perfect home run, you know, a, a, a game-winning home run out of the park hire for Arkansas. Who could you do better at Arkansas right. than John Calipari? If you're Kentucky now, the clock has started when it comes to finding the next guy. Matt already listed a few, Rick Pitino, Nate Oates, and Scott Drew. How quickly do they need to move? Because now you may have that roster shifting a little bit. So I, I think uh, one of the funny things is I think the unwritten rule is you can't uh, say Rick Pitino's name and Kentucky together unless you <laughs> whisper it. You, you have to almost whisper it. There's no way that could happen. I will say if Rick Pitino was 61 and not 71, this deal would have been done this morning for him to come back. I think he's still beloved enough. Nate Oates, obviously, uh, uh, that's that's a hot name. That makes a lot of sense. But he's got an $18 million buyout. He works for one of the best ADs in the country in Greg Byrne. Does, is Kentucky going to give Nate Oates more than what he's getting at Alabama? I'm not so sure. Scott Drew won a national championship at Baylor. Obviously, uh, he's going to be a really hot name. He's one of the best coaches in the sport. I think he would fit well. There's no way Billy Donovan's leaving the NBA. I, I, I don't believe it. I, I think it would be one of the most amazing stories in college basketball in the last 30 years if he came back to college basketball. He left college basketball because of how difficult and crazy recruiting is. It's even worse now because of the transfer portal and NIL. So he's not leaving the Bulls, right, to go, to go back to Kentucky. I think a couple names that, that we also need to talk about in a bigger way is, you know, there's going to be a lot of names attached to this. One of the names I think at the top of the list should be Mark Pope at BYU and what he's done and had a fantastic year, six, year, six seed in the NCAA tournament. Uh, 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 obviously the first year in the Big 12 had a lot of success. He played for one of the best Kentucky teams ever. Um, Dan Hurley's your first call. Does he leave? I, I don't think yeah. so. I, I don't think he will. Right. right. There's other names of Bruce Pearl, uh, maybe Brad Underwood at Illinois. I think a name you need to pay attention to that not enough people are talking about is Tommy Lloyd at Arizona. That program was stuck when Lute Olson, Lute Olson left, and he revitalized Arizona in a way that I don't think anybody expected quickly. And he said it, you better get Arizona now because what he's doing and how he's recruiting and how he's building rosters, he can do that at Kentucky. That's a name that I think you need to have a little bit more conversation with. Maybe an under the radar name, Amir Abdur Rahim at South Florida, what yeah. he did at Kennesaw State. What he did at South Florida was virtually impossible to win that many games in a row, over 20 wins in a row in a program that just hasn't experienced any winning at all. Um, I thought uh, Abdur Rahim was going to be in the conversation for the Arkansas job. I thought that fit really well for him. So, but. Cal, Coach Cal is going to get a lot of coaches paid right yeah. now because they're going to be like, oh, you don't want me to go to Kentucky? Mm -hmm. Pay up. Let's <laughs> yeah, go. Exactly. And that's going to be, it's going to be wild. These next 48 hours are going to be nuts.